What up? How's everybody doing out there? Us First too. All right. right. Great. Yeah. Hey, we have something extraordinary today, folks. We have Chris, Mag Chris McGee and Dallas Escobedo. I can't talk today, obviously, because I'm <laughs> fangirling big time. Yeah, and we're just going to leave it there because... Fangirling Chris, too. Yeah, why not? The guy's <laughs> awesome. All right. So just a little background here. Chris is a phenomenal trainer in yeah. Arizona. Dallas, well, Olympic team for Team Mexico. Hey. And dominated, in my opinion. Thank so winter sports is like she does like uh skiing or, well everybody or, knows already what she does well no they don't no anyway, nobody has a clue yes, training of what softball player softball and right now she's in japan and chris is in arizona uh -huh. okay now before i get into questions i want to say this if i can actually spit it out and talk i'm so excited to talk to you right now that's awesome <laughs> so to me these two are the first couple of softball and here's why dallas and chris met at Arizona State, mm -hmm. and have been together ever since. They have worked together, making each other better in their field, and they have strived to become a power couple. And what I love is that he supports her 100 million percent, she supports him 100 million percent, and there's nothing better to see than these two together, working together, making each other better, and now they're making other people better. With their development so that's, that's what awesome. i was trying to get out why i was so excited so thank you guys so, so you, dallas what, you, what? Picture. what is it you didn't say that did you no okay so she's a pitcher everybody right? knows so now you, yes. you're a pitcher yes from okay. Arizona, went to asu yes right on she won a national championship her freshman year at ASU. what year was that 2011. perfect yes yeah. there she was somebody from here up there that was on her team the first baseman uh, Katie Crab. For oh, on your show? No, no for, for that you. was a teammate for you Katie, at Arizona State. No, Katie Crab, I think went to. Uh, she was older. State. She was older than. Oh, she was older than the championship yeah. before that. Yeah, she was before, but no, she's definitely alum. Perfect. Definitely. Nice. Now, with you guys being apart and coming together and all that kind of good stuff, your relationship has some fun times. How do you guys work through all that? I think the <laughs> biggest thing is like, like right now I'm over here blowing Chris up, like, because I get to come home at uh, early end of November and I'm like, okay, so when are we going to Hawaii? When are we going here? When are we like, so I'm just like over here trying to plan like vacations and he's probably like, I'm trying to plan a softball a fall <laughs> schedule. So, um, but that we definitely try to keep things fun and uh, enjoyable whenever we are together. That's awesome. Nice. Hey, Chris, so how long have you been uh, working with softball? Um, shoot. I'd say like the past five years. Uh, um, you know, when, when me and Dow, you know, got together, I, you know, I kind of made it a point to just tackle, you know, every, you know, all the ins and outs, you know, okay. you know about the game. Um, there's a lot of similarities to baseball, which you know, I was very familiar with, but there's also a lot of differences at the same time. So, um, yeah. You know, whether it's the coaching aspect or, you know, the culture of the game or, you know, just uh, everything, right? Just so I've, I, I don't know. I, I just think, you know, maybe the last two years, I, I've really, really um, dove, dove into it. So okay. uh, did you play baseball at a pretty high level? Is that what? Uh, you, no, not at a high level. Right, no, like, I, I mean, I played in high school. Okay. Right? Um, I, I'm a football guy. So, okay scored four yeah. touchdowns in one football game and yeah yeah you know things like that it. no but um no i have like you know i have uh my older brother brandon he played for the red Sox. oh that's uh, awesome yeah so i mean whole families you know just sports one way or the other so yeah yeah definitely that's awesome now chris for you going from baseball to softball i was in baseball for well, let's just say quite a few years. I did some scouting um, and all that kind of good stuff. Did some coaching. For me, the transition was tremendous. I fell in love with softball because my daughter started playing and I didn't realize how much I would love it. And I was able to coach college ball. I got, I was fortunate enough to do that. For you, was that just kind of like where you came in the last couple of years? You're just falling in love with it too? 
Yeah, so I honestly, I to be completely honest, I used to hate softball before uh, I met Dallas. I like um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, listen, everybody knows it. So I, um, but look, I mean, you know, having to our whole relationship from the start has been, you know, kind of long distance. Um, you know, whether she was at Fullerton or, you know, her leaving every summer to play in the pro league or now the Japan thing and you know things like that. So I've I've had to essentially kind of, you know, buy in, you know, to support her. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, her being who she is, it's a lot easier for me to love the game, right? Because I get to see it at the highest level at all times. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's not, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been very fun. That's cool. So Dallas, what, what, um, were you always the softball, 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 or were you kind of sporty for everything that you did? I was always like, what can I do other than softball? Because <laughs> I knew, oh. I definitely knew that like softball was there and I loved the sport, but I was yeah. like, well, I want to play volleyball and I want to play basketball. And um, I joined drama club. Like I do, I try to do a lot of different things. Um, I think one of my favorites was just in high school, I played basketball for three out of my four years and I was on varsity for two of them. And I played with women that ended up going to, um, high level schools uh, de at the division one level and then even in the professional uh, league and so I think that was like really cool for me that I was competitive in a sport that wasn't mine but I saw like I was with people that that was their sport and and honestly like I was pretty good like I was in there I was the center I was well Dallas so, that also leads it to another quick question is yeah. um being somebody who played lots of other sports, do you feel that helped you as you just became just softball going into college and then in the Olympics and that stuff? Did you take things from the other sports that carried on as well? Oh yeah. Like you've just like, I've, I always think about just like playing cause I played volleyball in grade school, but I played just softball and basketball in high school. And it was right before softball season. And I would come back like in the best running shape ever because that's all oh, we yeah. did were suicides and everything. Yeah. And so like leading into just training, like thinking about like, what I did in high school, what, and then college going into college, it was like, all right, like I've ran the court hundreds of times in one day. And here I am on the field running foul poles. Now I'm running to Oklahoma city is like what our saying was. And so just like the hard work ethic that goes hand in hand with all sports, I think um, that's what carried with me. But I just think the fun and the memories was the biggest thing to just like be mm -hmm. present and have fun, like in that moment. And so that's just like how I like to live my life and do my thing just being present and like having a good time anytime yeah when you were walking out <clears throat> where was the olympics that you were played in the last one yeah. oh you just did that's why you're in japan that's why i was gonna yeah. do a match well, I work you out just go the there yeah. <laughs> but yeah, sorry the olympics, yeah. so very different olympics than before but what was the experience just walking out in that whole process like a I mean, dream, it's, right? Yeah, it's all a dream. And then like with everything being so crazy with our world, like with it being postponed and then finally like everything leading up in between, it was like, wow, we're we our first game against Canada. It's like, wow, we're here. Like it's actually happening. And so um, oh. I was definitely nervous. I was excited. I had the butterflies. It was all about all the above. But um, what I after that first game, what we like asked ourselves was like, did we even have fun? We ended up losing and we're like, did we even have fun? And we're like, no, we didn't because we were so stressed. We're like, oh. all this build up was like <laughs> this game in this moment. And we forgot like who we were for a second. And so I think that after that, we totally turned it around and we were ourselves. And that at that time we gave our best foot forward and it was, it was so much better. So just to, to be yourself and to just do what you know how to, it's just a game is where mm -hmm. you have to put that. So Chris, you weren't able to go because you couldn't bring people this year to that. Right. So, and so you're usually there at her events. I would think, right. You're able to be there supportive. How did you, try to keep that support for her while she was over there playing as opposed to you, what you would normally do um honestly oh, i was right? i i had parties at the house every night so <laughs> <laughs> yeah was, yeah like like you know friends her her whole family was here like That's you know cool. her support system is huge right yeah. you know with me in the picture or without but um you know huge family ties there but i'm as far as like you know I actually lived in Japan with her the first two years that she played professionally. Yeah, so it's like, I've already been to all those stadiums. I've already seen, you know, some of the best games there is to see. And so like, 
for me personally, it wasn't like I was missing out on anything because I know I'll be back there one day watching her play, but I personally felt bad for mom and dad. Like I felt like mom and dad should have, you know, every kid's mom and dad should have at least gotten a ticket to go watch. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I sit here and I'm seeing all these volunteers and all these, whatever, you know, just running around the stadium and all the, you know, media. And this, it's like, you know, there's 15 girls on a team. We couldn't have just given 60 tickets and spread them all out. Every, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, that's, that's the one thing I, you know, that, that hurt for me is, you know, her parents couldn't be there for her. So. Yeah. No, I get that. Now I'm gonna go a little sideways here. Cause that's what I like to do at times. You know, I love the posts that you guys had that you guys put out there. And I'm going to talk about the big elephant in the room. Your two puppy dogs. How are they doing? Because I love them to do that. Oh, my God. I got to bring them up because, to me, seeing those posts of those two are unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I love uh, me. Trying to get them. Oh, my God. Yes. I'll, I'll get them. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Monsters, but I love These dogs are so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you can't wait to get home to hug them and play with them, too, right? Like, I always talk about when Huey, oh, there he is on the couch. When he sees me walk in the door, he's he's um going over. He jumps over the couch like he's fine, usually. There's Jax. He's the new one. But they're legit brothers um, from the same breed and breeder. And it's just they are mine and Chris's personality, I say. Like, Chris and oh. Jax are the same. Crazy mile per minute outgo <laughs> like just and Huey as he was on the couch just like oh what's happening what do you want I gotta move <laughs> <laughs> that guy, that's just totally me I feel like and so they're the the best dogs ever and oh I my just, gosh I those are them. horses not dogs yeah. <laughs> they're, they're really awesome big. I love it oh they're beautiful yeah. like I said I had to go a little sideways because yeah, they're so fun. cool anytime yeah <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> now Right now, you are in Nagoya, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Nagoya is the main city, and I'm in Kadia, is my little one, about 45 minutes away. But yeah. Okay. Are you still playing for? Uh, is it Shiko Tokyo or Toyota? Or yeah, Toyota Shoki. You're close. Okay. okay, good. I was trying to pronounce it right, and I go, I'm gonna butcher this. So I'm just gonna throw it out there. Yeah. No, I am with them. This is my uh, third year. This is the second half of my third year here. Nice. nice. And. A lot of people don't understand that in Japan, if I remember correctly, they play two halves of a season yes. and go from there, right? Yeah, so the first, like I usually come out um, early March and then I'll leave middle to end of May. And then I'm home for the summer, whether it's traveling and playing like I have been for my past whole life <laughs> or uh, just um, enjoying time at home. And then I left august like 16th or 15th and um i'll be here probably till the middle of november for the That's second amazing. and a big thing is like i had to leave a little earlier just with quarantine so i get yeah. you i get so you. when having gone to japan now you've been in there three years how much can you converse with people now like pretty well or do you still have like yeah. we used to have a awesome teacher but she ended up retiring and then with covid not extra people like coming in and out. And so um, we do the apps uh, that helps us, but I have okay. a like Japanese, like daily, whatever, like daily words to get by book. And mm -hmm. I look at that, but being on the field with the girls and hearing them just like chat normally, like I could pick up a few words and then I'll like know like how to ask questions and whatnot. But it's, it's to me, it's easier than like any other language because I'm in it so much and yeah. you just pick up words. Like Chris knows quite a bit too. And at the house, we'll just yell at each other in Japanese, like our favorite <laughs> words and stuff. And so, but yeah, we definitely really enjoy learning the language. That and don't, don't forget Kuroki. Shout out to Kuroki and Debbie. Yeah, nice. so that's it. That's her interpreter. She has an interpreter. Yeah, an, interpreter. Oh, yeah. Cool. And then an American coach as well. She's our catching, our battery coach mm -hmm. uh, for catchers and pitchers. And so, like that, being a part of the team has been so helpful. Definitely. Yeah. And just so we can put down in regards to shout outs down below, Kuroki and Debbie, if you want to either send me their instagram information or just shout it out real quick let's oh i don't out. i don't i don't think they have that stuff okay i wasn't sure i wasn't sure I'm no I'll, sure. I'll, I'll i'll at least send you the spelling so yeah there we go we'll thank we'll you credit. we yeah. appreciate it definitely they need to 
you know, be credited. Now, is there anybody else, since we're talking shout outs, anybody else you guys want to go ahead and give a shout out to? I mean, usually I shout out my husband, but he's here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's a plus. Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, too, so we're good. <laughs> all, right, all right. You know what I want to ask is um, the sportsmanship between the other teams in the Olympics, different countries, right? <clears throat> the reactions with the other teams was there a lot of um like you said the first game was like against canada um you played obviously multiple different countries but what was the sportsmanship like playing against people from other countries and did you have any people that you might have played against in college that also played for other countries oh yeah definitely i mean <clears throat> we played we've had battles with canada back and forth for the last few years and oh, yeah. um, i think that I've, I've played with a few girls on the professional level, and I think knowing them definitely, just That's as cool. women that have played in previous Olympics, like to mm -hmm. just look at as mentors. Um, so Canada, they did a great job. And I think that for me, they're one of the best, uh, like well-trained um, teams. They came in there and they, they had a job to do. I think that I obviously have played against USA and a lot of those girls against um, them in college and professionally, but um, one of the best things is having two Sun Devils on my uh, Mexico team with me. Oh, um, my, my catcher cool. and my second baseman were we were all Sun Devils and we played together. So it was like that stuff made made things pretty special too. But yeah, the, the familiarity of that. Oh yeah. Overall sportsmanship, I think everybody had the respect um, for each other, but most of all for the game because the softball hadn't been in the Olympics for 13 years. And right. I think everyone was just very happy that it was back and it, we were happy to be there and what we worked for for all those years. And I think that that's kind of what the overall um, camaraderie of it was, like that we're, we're here and we're the first teams, six teams back since 2008, basically. That's amazing. So that's actually, this is one of my favorite questions to ask. And you guys will understand it in just a second as soon as I spit it out. Uh, so I like to talk to my players about the first step and then the first two steps on a play. If you're behind, you've lost the play. If your first two steps or your first step's a positive step, it's a plus play. Now, in your coaching and your playing, do you guys see that and utilize that? I would say for me as a player, I definitely utilize that like to – I utilize it as a way when I'm pitching that I know that if I'm doing everything I need to leading up to my performance, then that's a positive. If I skip a beat or if something doesn't feel like how it's supposed to feel, then I kind of take a step back where I'm like, okay, how it's more of a reflection. How can I be better? Or like reflecting on a loss. How, what, what did I do then that I could work on to be better the next time? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely routine is a big uh, thing for me. And like yeah. using that is more of my like one, two step. Yeah. I got you. Is there anything on the micro level? We got this from Jonathan Ogden, the big monster tackle from the Baltimore Ravens actually we got it through somebody else but this is something Jonathan Ogden did <clears throat> he would go out and, and practice 20 minutes before and he would just take Six the inches. first Boom. step for 20 yeah. minutes that's all he did <clears throat> and he'd take the other lineman out there and he definitely taught them Hold how on. important he that didn't was. take them he grabbed them he and said grabbed them coming and now. he did yeah and talked about that that was the most important step and to have that just in the back of your mind as you as a coach, Chris, and you as, as a player, Dallas, do you have those little tiny things that you practice over and over every time just to make sure that happens? And then do you feel that sometimes you miss that, that you need to go back to the basics on that? Yeah, I like for me, right now for me, I see it all the time when, you know, you're trying to coach outfield. Okay. So many times I see, you know, you don't see first step back anymore to track a ball. You see kids just flying in not you know the angles aren't there this and that so we've you know the whole reason we started this organization was one to just be transparent um and, and to show parents that hey your kids can be developed and not everything is a money grab right so yeah and so like you know uh we have practice today so you know practices from you know six to nine but i'll be there at five you know, five pitchers and catchers have bullpens. And then, you know, from 530 to 6, 
uh, it's, it's just little work like that, like that tackle was talking about. All the outies will be with each other. All the innies will be with each other. Just working on like just progression, right? Mm -hmm. Progression. It's not necessarily even with balls out there or their gloves, just progression. So that's cool. I love it. And Dallas, did you find that <clears throat> playing professionally as well? And, and, in, and was there a difference like between the Olympic team and your professional teams in that same idea concept of the progression and the little things? Was it taught differently? Um, I think so. Like the Japanese way out here, like with my team, I, what I really do like best, like we'll travel on Thursday and then we play on the weekends, but Friday we practice at the venue that we are going to be playing at. And mm -hmm. for me, having the five minutes that I can throw off the mound that I'm going to be pitching on the next two days yeah. is huge. I think like when we were able to do that at Yokohama Stadium, like I was telling my other pitchers for the Olympics, I'm like, I almost feel like I'm on top of the world. Like this is easy. This is what how it's supposed to feel because I was already on that mound. I knew how it felt. I knew the environment that I'm going to be in. And so like practicing where you're going to be playing, like that's my huge like one two step basically that's because that that already is like oh I've already been here before. Like yeah. even if it's the yeah. day before I've already thrown pitches off the mound. I see how my ball moves from uh here to there and so I think that is a really big thing that we do out here which I think everyone should incorporate if it's possible like playing or at least practicing on the field that you're going to be playing at or the mound at least for a pitcher yeah I love that I do that's, do. that's cool insight as to <clears throat> I'm wondering how that plays into a lot of people's familiarity oh you know, yeah that's huge you know it's home huge. field advantage but now because you've done all that uh, uh, before that you're trying to take away their home field by being able to practice the day before that's pretty big. yeah definitely it's 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 helped it really helps me and i really hadn't done that until i got out here and got into what the routine of uh the way that my team is ran and i really really like it yeah hey chris i wanted to talk to you about uh your training business um you've got a lot of really good things on i follow you on instagram obviously and I love what you're doing and how you're doing it and what you got going on. Would you like to explain to everybody on um, the who, what's, when, where's, and how's, as I like to say? So, uh, like, obviously, I have a sports background, but, you know, when sports were over for me, I got into the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. um, it worked, like, our relationship worked out when I was doing that because, like, I was obviously just running the gyms, but I'd always have weekends off. So, I'd take the last flight out on Friday. And I take the first flight back on Monday, just, you know, to, to be with her on the weekends. Um, now, when she approached me with the, you know, her playing professionally in Japan, I shut it down right away. Like it was a, absolutely not like it's all about softball and, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, but, I, you know, I always tell her too, I'm like, call your dad, call your dad, see what he's going to say. Because me and her dad are like best friends. We golf together, we hang out, like he, awesome. we're always together. And, uh, She's like, okay. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, God, because, you know, she's like, okay. And like, when she does that, it's just like, all right, I'm probably going to be wrong in this situation. <laughs> but um, no, the the whole training thing, like, you know, when, when we really sat down and, you know, agreed for her to do that. And then, you know, she's like, babe, like you can move to Japan with me, whatever. It's just like, well, I can just sit there. You know what I mean? I'm not just going to sit there. Like I'll support you, whatever. So I started this online training company. Um, realistically all it is is i break down people's macros i give them training regimens i tell them when and what to eat you know at what time whatever and we've had so much success with it um you know i'm paired with you know meal prep companies um actual nutritionists that you know can can help these you know uh, kids you know athletes or parents or whatever it is out you know all 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 walks of life so it's um it's really cool. And then just the relationships and word of mouth, it's like, you know, some people only stay for, you know, three to six months, but I mean, I still have, you know, we're going on year three now and I still have like five of those same people. So it's, it's really, really cool. That is cool. I like to hear that. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. We appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. And we're definitely going to get that information because we want to get that out. So everybody knows about you because <laughs> they need to, well, at least I do. Thanks. Definitely. Now, DNC softball. Is that Dallas and Chris softball? I love it. it. <laughs> and you're based out of Phoenix, Arizona. Just so everybody that wants to be developed or their young child be developed in the right way, in my opinion, 
you definitely need to go see Chris and Dallas because they will definitely help you out. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Awesome. Well, yeah. I, I just love it. We're, we started off as a local talk show. Yes. And now we're truly, I mean, we've been doing it internationally, but we became an international talk show. So we're talking in Japan, Japan and in Arizona at the same time. And it's just, it's amazing to be able to do that with, with today that we can, that we can share this and thanks for coming on our show and sharing you your stories so and how exciting it is that, that you, gosh, look at what you guys do. You, you're doing this from Japan and in and, and, and Phoenix. You guys love each other dearly and you guys are supporting each other in life, but it's also the experiences. You got to mm -hmm. take these memories forever. And I just, I just appreciate your guys' relationship and also your passion in what you do in softball. Yeah. Yeah. First couple of softball, as I First like to say. First couple of softball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spotify. Oh, yes. We have to give a shout out to our sponsor, Spotify, or Anchor no, by Spotify. Anchor by Spotify. I can't talk at all right now. <laughs> Anchor by Spotify. Thank you. We love yes. you. We appreciate you. Same with YouTube. Thank you. Uh, guys. I'm going to give you one more chance to pronounce your names properly. Chris McGee and Dallas Escobedo. There you go. Hey. Well, I can actually talk. And the scary thing is I know these people. Oh, God. <laughs> well, we, we look forward to watching the future for you guys and what happens. Oh, yes. And check back in with you guys. I just appreciate it. I don't know you, but I just appreciate you guys coming on the show. You guys are really wonderful. And I know Chris was really excited about this to, to be able to talk to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Thanks for having us. Yes. Appreciate it. What up? What and up, We'll everybody? talk to you guys all soon. All right. Bye. Thanks, guys. Chris, Dallas, thank you guys. Love you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.